Mystery on the Rooftop. I'm Jason Horton. I'm Rebecca Lieb. And this is Ghost Town. You might be familiar with the case of Ray Rivera, the 32-year-old and his new wife, Allison, moved to Baltimore so that Ray could take a job as a financial writer with his high school polo friend, Porter Stansbury. This is the first episode of the Unsolved Mysteries reboot, and it is fantastic. This is an experiment for us. We are obviously excited about the show. Yeah. And in conversations that we've had with each other and with other people, we're like, well, why don't we take that conversation here? Warning, if you have not seen episode one, Mystery on the Rooftop of Unsolved Mysteries on Netflix, spoilers ahead. This is your warning. It's pretty much all spoilers. Now, if you want to not listen right now, go back and watch the episode, come back. Treat. You could still listen Get something out of it and go back and watch the episode to add to it. Just letting you know there are spoilers. So you're yeah. not like, why did you tell me what happened? Uh, you know, yeah. I haven't watched it yet. I think if you're listening to Ghost Town, if you're a, an avid listener or even just drop in to say hello, you are probably, this is probably on your radar, I would say. I believe they kicked off the first episode of the Unsolved Mysteries reboot with a pr- really strong one. They're all great. Oh, yeah. This, this one one's is a banger. This one's really strong, and it checks off a bunch of boxes, uh-huh. which Ghost Town tends to check off a few boxes. That's right. So this is a, a little greatest hits of yeah. whatever Ghost Town is about, and we are excited about talking about it. We have both watched it. We are we- huge fans. We'll just say that off the bat. Like, we're we're big fans. We I personally, I was so tired that I watched the old Unsolved Mysteries, thinking it was the new one, and I was very confused. I was like, is this retro? Like, what? We all know what's happening. What's with the shoulder what's, pads on all these business suits? What's going on? Exactly. We know the Queen Mary is haunted. Tell me something else. But they did such – just talking about the show in general, I think, just to kind of hype it up, they do such a great job of taking the old Unsolved Mysteries and the theme song and all, like, the really the fun parts of that – and, and elevating it to a point where I, the old one, I think the biggest distinction when I was talking about it is the old one is very linear. It, it talks through each thing, each haunting, each, each true crime story. This one really gets into theories and it, and it lets the people involved kind of talk through what they think happened. And there's differing opinions. There's a lot of discourse. Obviously it's really well shot, well made. The reenactments are great. Um, the people that they, get like they really spin together much more of a story i think it's more of an experience of this time and place it's really great and what's great is that unsolved mysteries is a, is a pioneer of what we now talk about as mystery unsolved true crime mm-hmm. and i think taking the modern version of all of that i mean there's so much so many documentaries yeah. and id channel and and podcasts yeah and everyone does such a great job not us uh, mm-hmm. We have work to do, but we have a lot of work. To but do. we like to stand on the shoulders of giants. That's right. And I think it must be interesting for them to go back and be like, how do we maybe retrofit what we used to do and make mm-hmm. it fit in with something a little more modern now? And of course, they do a great job, and they take cases that are not, you know, completely brand new. Yeah, because you can go. People have talked about. I've looked at old conversations about these mm-hmm. cases years before. Obviously, unsolved mysteries brought them to the surface, which I also mm-hmm. think is great because hopefully they're doing a service. You know, yeah. they're, they're, you know, it, it, I ma- imagine being someone who's a allegedly, uh, you know, connected to a crime or mm-hmm. somebody who might know something and you have this show on Netflix mm-hmm. with such a huge audience. Imagine how nervous you would be yeah. to maybe be that person because somebody knows something, right? Yeah. That's what I always think. Like somebody knows something or somebody knows someone who knows something, mm-hmm. and this might bring it to the surface. That might bring some justice Absolutely. or some peace to the people that have been wronged. Yeah, and also the people that I've talked to, like my brother, for example, never watched the original Unsolved Mysteries. I- I've watched some of it, but it was not uh-huh. part of my world. I mean, it would be on TV, and I'd catch some of it, but mm-hmm. I-, I-, I really didn't know what I was looking at. Oh, I w- they terrified me. Abs- and I kept – I would just, like, run through them. But he was like, what – 
I think there's something, some trepidation to it where it's like, they're not solved. So we're not going to get a resolution. The show though, does a really, really good job of the uh, showing, giving some resolution while still leaving it open-ended for more discourse. Um, and to have those tips come in, like it chooses really good cases where you're going to get some closure and you're going to get some satisfaction, but you're also going to want to do your Reddit deep dive. In fact, Netflix dumped a bunch of footage on, uh, you know, Google drive of stuff that they didn't stuff that they did use and, and that they didn't use. And so they're part of the conversation too. They're very willing to be part of the kind of off broadcast conversation of getting these cases solved, which is so cool. It's really exciting. And, and if you watch an episode, y- y- your instinct is going to be like, I want to talk about this yes. with someone right now. We could be that someone yeah. because obviously we'd love to hear what you have to say. And you can always message us. And, and uh, but first we're going to kind of lay out a little synopsis just mm-hmm. to kind of either refresh your memory Stay or, line, baby. or yeah. just if you don't plan on watching it or you don't have Netflix or you don't care, uh-huh. and you just want to hear the story. We'll do that. Yeah. And then we'll go in to this auxiliary extra information that that reddit has provided you know via netflix or the other way around it's gonna be fun and then we have our own theories yes we got some theories we have some theories and Mm -hmm. everything that we say is it's conjecture it's alleged it's not it's not meant to be we're sitting here in a hot room what do you want from us we don't know we read the internet regularly we're just like you and I, I, maybe the only thing that we might have is we've obviously consumed a lot of this stuff. Yeah. And there's always patterns when it comes to delivering the entertainment of yeah. true crime. It, it, they tend to have somewhat of a pattern that makes it work, that makes it interesting mm-hmm. and makes it obviously what it is today. So knowing that, I mean, I took some community college psychology courses. Mm-hmm. And I am an art student. I have an MFA and a BFA. So here we are. It's a Just lot of it all out. If there's a like a, <laughs> the, the missing uh, the missing art case or like the art theory case, yeah, you got a, a painting heist. I've yeah, I've, I don't know. I've gotten B minuses in psychology because I used to want to be a therapist. <laughs> there you go. In pre-internet, You're, when I was this young, is as close as you'll get to being a therapist, maybe. And it wasn't because I was like, well, it, comedy didn't work out. Maybe I'll be a life coach. <laughs> Sorry, everybody who turned oh. to a life coach. Uh, I'm sure you're great. We just lost half our listenership. No. All right. We yeah. lost three people. We lost three but people. I know who they are. Three good ones. Though. We lost We lost three <laughs> good ones. Right. Okay. So let's get into it. This is Ray Rivera. So he's 32 years old. He just got married. They really, they start out the episode like this too. So you really, they bookend it with the love of these two people, which is, you will saw, I don't know. I got very teary during it because Alice and his wife is throughout it just like being really real with everybody talking through all the things that happened. It must have been very traumatic for her. Anyway, they moved to Baltimore so that uh, Ray could work with his high school best friend, polo guy. He's an athlete. Porter. Porter Stansberry. Is that a real name? (laughs) Apparently. Porter Stansberry is like a Brett Easton Ellis character come to life. So Allison goes away on a business trip, leaving her husband and her coworker, Claudia, who's staying with her at home. At 9.30 p.m. on May 16th, 2006, Claudia tells Allison that around 6 p.m. she hears Ray answer a phone call, respond, oh, then rush out of the house in flip-flops, leaving his retainer and soda on the counter, which I think is a very eerie detail. At 5 a.m. the next morning, Claudia calls Allison to say Ray is still not home. He's declared missing for the next eight days until they find his car, and, and Allison's parents find his car in a parking lot, which is in kind of the downtown historic area of Baltimore next to the... Uh, Baltimore, the Belvedere Hotel, which is a very beautiful, again, very old hotel in the middle of si- the city. His body was only discovered when a couple of co-workers noticed a hole in the top, not the top portion of the, of the Belvedere Hotel, but a bottom rooftop tier. It's a tiny hole. I mean, not tiny, but enough for a man to go through, but not like a hole where you think someone would like bust through. Uh, His body was discovered where the hole was found. Unfortunately, it was badly decomposed, broken in multiple places that were not entirely consistent with the fall. His flip-flops were totally broken, but his glasses and cell phone were completely fine, unscathed, which also doesn't quite make sense. A money clip, a gift his wife gave him for their wedding was never found. She talks about this tearing, you know, like through the car, looking everywhere, um, and never relocating that piece of jewelry. Jewelry? A clip. 
There was also a tiny note, and this is my favorite part of this, uh, with a bunch of kind of a list of movies, a lot of M. It's very M. Night Shyamalan heavy uh, movies, technology, um, quotes listed on it. And it was shrunken down to be about the size of like a quarter sheet, uh, cut down um, and then taped behind the computer. Now, uh, Ray's wife, Allison, knows that it was or thinks that it was probably part of his creative process. She also thinks that it was done that day because there were clippings in the garbage can from where he presumably cut it open and then taped it. A lot of people think this is a suicide note, like the cops who are already very convinced that this is a suicide. Ray was a big movie buff, but Allison also did some more research on the note and putting the opening line into Google, she realized that it was a quote from the Freemasons, which he was very, very interested in. And I actually did a little bit of... Um, yeah, the the Unsolved Mysteries episode doesn't get a lot into the Freemason mm-hmm. aspect of it. When I first was looking, you know, I looked at other people's comparing the other information that was out there previous because this is not brand new yeah. information. And the Freemason stuff was just kind of like lightly touched on, yeah. but not really revisited. Yeah. And there is more in that Google Drive, too, that talks more about the Freemasonry. He had uh, his wife thought it had to do with him writing a script about it um, or just kind of a fascination. He had a book, Freemasonry for Dummies, which sounds fascinating in and of itself. So she finds that Porter Stansberry uh, declines to comment during all of this and lawyers up. And the company he ran, which had some fraudulent dealings, also lawyered up two nights before he met. Before Ray went missing, however, the outside alarm went off. And by outside alarm, I mean like a, like. Motion sensor? Was it like a motion sensor? I feel like it was like a foghorn thing. And she shows this in uh, the show where it goes off. The police come. They say it's a squirrel. But you can see, she says that the window was tampered with. She also said that Ray comes out with a baseball bat. He's scared both times. He's kind of paranoid, more so than she's ever seen. And that's something that she observed of him and felt like it was warrant enough to talk about being out of the ordinary and and cause for alarm. The main detective is reassigned in the middle of the case, which also doesn't do the case much favors. But Allison, again, and her family and Ray's family are all very persistent. They're trying to figure it out, and they don't. Unsolved mystery. And here we are. Here we are. Okay, can I, can I lay out, like, first impressions when I watch the episode? Yes, you may. First impressions right off... Right off the bat, mm-hmm. you don't see or hear any video or audio from Ray himself. That's it's a lot of photos. A lot of photos. A lot of photos. I did not realize. Oh, you see a little bit of the wedding at the end. Yeah, maybe? but there's not. I I, I I like to hear people speak. Mm-hmm. For better, for worse. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. Nothing properly. But I like that. And they show a lot of photos. And I looked at the photos and. I've been finding this a lot. I think we've talked about this with some of the other episodes, like the Lars Mittank mm-hmm. episode and a lot of other true crime and, and, and murder and, and, you know, any kind of, uh, conspicuous weird stuff out there. They always describe the person. It always starts off with Ray is loves everyone. He's yeah, chill. So happy. Always happy, yeah. never sad, everything's good, nothing's ever bad. Smile, smile, smile. He's everybody's friend. They always, I feel like they always do that. But then you find out, then it's like, and th- you didn't really get that from this episode, but mm-hmm. that always seems to be the pattern. And, I, and I'm like, well, I mean, I guess that's a great way to start things. Because you, yeah, you start off you with like, turn. That's the you want that turn. turn. Yeah. But also, when it's coming from the family, mm-hmm. if I had a, you know, if I was discussing a relative, the last thing I'd want to do was to kind of drag their memory and their legacy through the mud. Yeah. If they had issues, especially if I didn't believe they were relevant. And also, does somebody's lack of mental well being mm-hmm. and alleged, this is alleged, does that make people think, I'm going to be maybe a little laissez faire about this and just say, yeah, it's suicide? Mm-hmm. Or are the police going to be like, oh, he was, you know, in therapy for years or he had issues with schizophrenia and i'm again these are all legend i'm not saying this happened other people interesting the conversations that are happening online are kind of bring that into oh, it really yeah and also the police might be dismissive of it so i can understand why the you know and plus your family maybe they don't know they only know 
the you know all my family is you know your family's yeah. in the in Milwaukee. Yeah, mine's in New York. A job. Yeah, I haven't had a job in months. They don't maybe not know everything, but everything. Mm-hmm. But I looked at those photos they showed, and to me, just looking at the photos, they all were so intense. And really? maybe they just showed. I found all of them to be like I was like wow this guy's like everything was like I'm smiling. Like, really? This is a happy photo. I mean, I looked into this dude's eyes in this photo through the TV. In fact, I turned, I was watching it with Michelle, my wife, and I turned, I was like, I mean, these photos look like somebody who's very intense. How about this? I'll say, I'll just say okay. intense. That's weird. I felt very differently. My first impressions was that, like, a lot of the, especially using the photos, was that he was really, like, hands on, like, kind of like, he reminds me of someone I like went to high school with, where it was just like always like I think intense maybe in some ways where it's like always given the like shaking like yeah. big smile like and those are the like, pictures that you take and keep which I yeah, understand exactly and like simple and again too I think this is also a convention of the people who structure these documentaries where they start out with this very you know concrete portrait of someone who how could they possibly die kind of a thing so I, again I think that is kind of structural manipulation but I uh, noticed I think. First and well, not first and foremost, but in the first couple minutes or so, like as we saw more and more talking heads and more people, this is one of those things where nobody seems like a suspect. None of the talking heads seemed like they did it, which it was like that was such an interesting positive spin on it for me, too, where I wasn't. You know, a lot of these things where you're like, did you do it? And especially some of the other episodes of Unsolved Mysteries. Of course, you look at any, like, you look at any spouse, family they members. All, it was like all so loving and so concerning. And they were all like so like invested in it and obviously like very fucked up by it. The interesting things about this case will not be with these people. It will be the storytelling of this case and the irregularity and the mysteries and the... And what happened ends. during these few minutes. Yeah, and, exactly. And, and these few minutes, it, when when they do a really great job in assembling a timeline, which I yeah. think is great for the show, and it helps keep you on track. I also, and we've talked about mm-hmm. religion on here and how, mm-hmm. you know, somebody sent us a nice message saying, hey, you know, you were so respectful about religion. Mm-hmm. And again, I kind of always do this. I feel like it seemed like the family might have been somewhat i don't know if it was christian or catholic or, or religious i think mm-hmm. the mom had a huge cross on mm-hmm. and, and the, the wife too she was yeah. like god's plan kind of a thing interesting when i i think it's possible and not every single time but it, it a family or people are very religious that could sometimes and it does sometimes sometimes it doesn't sometimes it has literally nothing to do with this <laughs> I, 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 my bases are covered <laughs> and this is not me saying anyone who goes to church on easter is mm-hmm. fanatical it's not the case but you we all know that various religions and then there's also cults and there's you know mm-hmm. fringe groups whatever I, I feel like that could possibly play into someone's intensity mm-hmm. and how possibly how they grew up mm. and how they developed as people, you know, is this part of God's plan? Yeah. Am I, am, and, you know, is, uh, does God, you know, uh, like what I'm doing? Doesn't like what I'm doing? Although as, you know, as time has gone on, I haven't really made it really a huge part of it. It's just something I noticed when I watched the episode. Okay. Interesting. So when you say intensity, let's just break it down. You think he was struggling with mental illness. I think it is possible that he was at at the very, very least mm-hmm. eccentric or had some kind of eccentricities. And at the very, very most, either checked or unchecked mental illness. You can say that about anybody. Yeah, right? of course. Like we all suffer. I, I mean, I looked. I and or, or what are the asked the parents? Is he uh, any mental? Nope, he's fine. And that they that could be their honest answer, or it's mm-hmm. going to be like I'm not telling you that he went to a therapist once. Yeah, right. But and, <sighs> and especially yeah. maybe if you come from a place of religion, and also therapy over the years has even in my lifetime it used to be super taboo. Now it's a lot less taboo. Yeah, you know. So there's that stigma of that. True. And, and culturally too, you know, they sure. said that they were, um, you know, his his parents were immigrants, and certainly like culturally, in a lot of cases, again, not saying it's this case, but uh, that can be taboo to seek help for mental illness. Um, it's, but I I felt like it was the opposite for me. I felt like he was just kind of a dumb, dumb, happy go lucky do jock guy who got caught up 
in this specific cir- circumstance and didn't was not realizing how deep he had gotten. So it's interesting that you go internal and I go kind of external. Again, he was a big M. Night Shyamalan fan. What does that say? And now he moved from Los Angeles, correct? I to- don't, they don't say exactly that, that he was here as a screenwriter. They just said he like, didn't make money. Was he here? I, from what I get, what okay. I gather, and I could be wrong, that they moved. He wanted to be a screenwriter. And I thought they were in in Los Angeles for a time, and and hmm. and moved to Baltimore when he got this job. Either way, he wanted to be a screenwriter. Right? Yeah, and even the best screenplays don't even get seen. Yeah, it's so competitive. Yeah. there's so much stress. I mean, we've. You know, we we've had almost many things happen. So yeah. a lot of people I've had more almost many things than actual yeah. things. Actual happen. things. It's a really tough business to be in. Mm-hmm. What pressure does that put on people? Yeah. But also people that are like, oh, I'm I'm uh, I'm a you know I'm a writer. I you know getting my word out there. It is so important that I do that. The pressure mm-hmm. you put on yourself, and also again, might not be in this case. It's in a lot of cases, I'm telling you firsthand, this is not, I'm not speculating. There is a lot of people that are delusional when it comes to Mm -hmm. either their talent or even if it's not their talent, but the the idea of you having success or making money Mm -hmm. in what you want to do is a lot of pressure to put on yourself and is very, 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 very difficult. It could be right place, right time. It could be the script you made today might be it might be great 10 years ago or 10 years from now mm-hmm. all the pieces have to fit they obviously didn't for him in a very short amount of time yeah well that's why i think he's a he's kind of a dumb dumb you know like i again i didn't i didn't listen and hear specifically that he had moved to la or not but the idea of writing and and netflix i urge you release the ray rivera screenplays i want to read them i think others do too release the cut <laughs> release <laughs> the rivera it. cut Exactly. Like, I think it's one of those things where, you know, he wanted to do this thing. But of course, if he if that's what he really wanted, he wouldn't have moved to Baltimore to be a financial writer. And she's like, oh, what are you going to do? He's like, oh, well, uh, you know, I'm a writer. I'm going to write financial newsletters. And I found that to be strange is, is because – and the fact that he doesn't know necessarily about finance isn't important because mm-hmm. anyone could write yeah. about anything. No, I know a lot of writers who write about finance here in L.A. that yeah. had know nothing about it. So that didn't feel that strange. But do you really – I mean is it where it's like, hey, man, we're dried up here. We can't find anyone – with a brain to put sentences together to make these a uh, fine like do you really yeah. need someone that's like oh you're a screenwriter good because the people we have here can't yeah, but his those... friend is like old yeah, dumb dumb right. pol- you know like old polo friend who's like you need a job maybe I don't it's know. like th- yeah throwing him a, a bone a clearly questionable company where it's like yeah. you need a job come work for my sketchy finance firm yeah like, i feel like it was yeah. a somewhat of a sketchy job yeah. maybe yeah maybe his friend just throwing him a bone and of probably a very sketch. I don't know if it's like a boiler room type thing where, and then because um, then they said he they were writing, he was writing for them and also doing freelance videography for them. So it's almost like whatever he needed, his friend was like, yeah, like come, like we'll throw you some cash for this. Where the cash came from, the Russians? I don't know. Like a catch-all media person, yeah, or something like that. Kind of like that, and I think that rings believable to me. To that rings believable to me, and also like. Yeah, he's getting into deep. You know, like, he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know who his friend from high school is associating with at this point. He's 32 now. He's not 18. But I, I believe it. what I would get. Anything that he is doing, you know, the mind of someone who's like, oh, as a comedian, would be like, mm-hmm. oh, this situation is interesting. It, it will be jokes later on. Mm-hmm. Where you kind of take anything that you're doing, you're like, this is all material. You mm-hmm. know, maybe him working for that place is like, oh, I can use it for my screenplay. Yeah. And probably also, like, he just got married. He's like, I guess I'm an adult now. Like, I need to, like, bring some money in for this. They talked about him wanting to have a kid, all that stuff, and being like, time to grow up, maybe. You know, time to, like, really get grounded with it. Yeah. Baltimore is the second Hollywood, so. It is. I mean, Baltimore as a city, I mean, it looks like where they live was pretty nice and not all yeah, of Baltimore. Yeah, the house was amazing. But Baltimore, you know, statistically, and I don't know where it falls out right now, is a relatively, it was known to be a dangerous city. Yeah, huge yeah. organized crime uh, yeah. rate there, too. And also, just reading Reddit, just the people who comment are, like, lots of crime, organized crime, high crime rate crime rate everywhere crime rate specifically in the belvedere hotel so you know it's all around him did he see it 
I don't know. I mean, eventually, I think he he did. I also found this interesting, and I was I was like, are they going to touch on this? And you know, per, you know, we, I don't know what I don't know. I don't know what they've gone over. But the last person that we knew to see Ray alive was his wife's friend. Friend. friend? I also found that weird, and uh, that was honestly Claudia? people. Were, yeah, Claudia, and I was just like. That is just like a oh yeah the last person was the woman not to say listen a woman can stay with the man and not be married I mean is it a little weird maybe it depends on who you are but it was kind of like yeah hey, my friend uh, Claudia was just staying there and you know she just told me what happened you don't see or hear from her yeah that's interesting and that's what's kind of you don't know if they're just like I don't want to talk about this or how many times did they talk about it up until this point this isn't the first time these mm-hmm. people have discussed this it's not like they're like oh we want to talk about this case you never brought up before so yeah. they. And maybe she doesn't want to be involved. I don't know. But I feel like I would love to have heard from her. Oh, absolutely. Because she's just – because if, again, she's – let's just presume she's completely innocent and was just staying there. It was a weird situation where her friend – Coincidentally, she's staying there. They said work friends. They didn't say friend. It was a work friend. So coincidentally, the wife, Allison, went on this work trip and her work friend was staying in their house. It just seems very odd. It's an exchange program where you yeah, leave one like, behind or exactly something? Like an Airbnb style. But for her to be on screen and be like, look, I was there for a night. The night this guy disappeared. Like, how crazy. You know, I'm just minding my own business kind of a thing. All of a sudden, I hear him take a phone call. And also, the phone call, I think, is so implicating because the phone call, I didn't mention this in the kind of review in the beginning was from um stansbury financial who we don't know we don't know because it's from the motherboard it's a like, mo- yeah it's a they motherboard find that out why don't they find out like who's working there at that time like why don't they do more with that financial place i feel like they really didn't the police just like didn't go as deep as they should have i think they all everyone pretty much had a gag order yeah and they really couldn't discern i mean they probably could if they really they wanted to subpoenaed, like i i don't know i find that to be very Clearly, something happened that had to do with his work. Where the, the last person that saw Ray alive that we mm-hmm. know and the last person to speak to him on the telephone that we know is just information that you don't get. And yeah. I, I feel like that's – even being like – starting from that morning, what what was Ray like that day that you may have noticed? Yeah. I feel like that's super key and I'm like waiting for these people – to show up and they mm-hmm. don't and it's super frustrating i'm sure there's a, I'm, yeah. I'm sure the people at unsolved mysteries is like can we get claudia oh no well, for whatever reason yeah. like her what's, where is she exactly. where is she and how is she involved in it and is she is it weird that she's there i'm not trying to be a puritan no, or anything but like that I think but we're just just examining anything that seems out of the ordinary it may be nothing it, it may very well be nothing and maybe it is nothing that's not why you know and and Unsolved Mystery seems to have their own way of laying out 40-something minutes. Exactly. And and I, I totally understand that, too. Um, but I think it, it's enough to – there's I think there's enough evidence the last call he got in his life was from his place of work. And the fact that they that couldn't – That he had to run out of the house. Penetrate that at all seems fucking crazy to me. Now, I, I try to think, does Ray – you know, he ran out in his flip-flops. Yeah. If – is that – normal for him is that something he's like yeah he he like if it's something where he's just going to 7-eleven or mm-hmm. he's just going out to pick someone up or whatever the case may be mm-hmm. does he normally go out in flip-flops mm-hmm. or is that something where he's like i've never seen him just like anytime yeah. he leaves it's like somebody's like i don't leave the house without a full face of makeup i don't yeah. know it's one of those things i would like to know those things because if it's something that he does normally that makes it like okay, so he did leave abruptly, but he always kind of leaves that. But does yeah. he? What does he normally leave behind? What does exactly. he normally take with him? Like you put your retainer back in your retainer case if you're my dentist talking to me. Yeah. It's, do you do it? Yeah. Well, I don't know, but yeah, he left in a hurry in flip flops again. Not like ideal driving shoes, um, and also like what call from his place of work would warrant that too. You know, I get it if it's like a call from some unknown number or like. A personal number or a friend, and it's after work hours. It's yeah, it's after it's late, it, later at night. What what would that be like? Who would that be from? Again, was it a, was it kind of baiting him? So he drives to this parking lot. He parks. We know he he gets there in his car at some point, but then it's like from there to the roof. 
to the room the room below and that's room. where this all yeah sort that's of where lies. the theories really like branch apart and expand and that's really interesting the physical seemingly impossibilities to get that human mm-hmm. into that hole mm-hmm. is what a lot of the episode covers trajectories or yeah. there's did a car hit him yes. and send him flying but you look at that hole and the first thing i looked at that hole i was like a human being didn't fall through. Yeah, I agree. You'd have to almost like kind of jackknife. Not, I don't know if it's jackknife, but you'd have to jump in Your straight like a to, bullet. Yeah, yeah exactly. bullet. And who would think to do that? And who would be like, well, this nine times out of ten, this is what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make any sense. And I, you know, was kind of looking to see if there was any DNA because the. Mm-hmm. Lee detective at the time, he's like, I could fit through there yeah. with like barely any room. Clearance. And he's yeah. a pretty big dude. He wasn't like a tiny dude. No, he was like six three or something. Yeah, and the and the police officer was a pretty big dude. So mm. and was there any DNA skin? Yeah. There seemed to be it seemed the whole either seemed to have been there already or created. I don't yeah. know how fresh it was. Uh, yeah, because I, I I played it back and I was like, okay, so we don't know if this guy went through this hole. We know that there is a hole and a badly decomposed body under the hole. But yeah, it just doesn't it doesn't seem like and I was also reading on Reddit and they were talking about fall trajectories and how usually alive, dead, the heaviest part of your body is what falls first. So it wouldn't be his feet unless he I mean other people are saying if he was still alive, maybe his feet, but it wouldn't be his feet. It'd be kind of his, you know, like pelvis, like stomach, like more of his torso, which wouldn't create such a tiny hole. There are things that allude to the movie The Game. Interesting. Have you seen the movie The Game? I have not, but it's also on his list, right? It's on his list. And yeah. spoiler alert that the movie's very old, but in the movie The Game, it's uh Michael Douglas is part of a what seems like it starts out like a game but then Mm -hmm. seems very real Mm -hmm. and it ends with this is not how the movie ends but there's a scene where it ends with him jumping off a building of a hotel into a lower part of a hotel what it is very coincidental at least at most it's It's part of it reenactment of the game Jesus. It's it's a an interesting kind of borderline on conspiracy, but it's mm-hmm. mentioned on that little piece of paper. When mm-hmm. when you see the little piece of paper, it's a teeny It's teeny so thing. small, like as if he's like, I don't like to waste any paper. I make it very small. I, very a, a small. good friend of mine. Taped like a psychopath would tape something. Almost kind of like I hope no one finds this yeah, secret like code. Laminated, yeah, but not. Necessarily, a, it's kind of people said it was part of a suicide note, but there's a couple of things saying yeah. it's not a suicide note. One being people usually leave suicide notes. They don't want you to find it in 30 years. Yeah. They want you to find it right away because you want to give peace to your family. And there's – it's cryptic if anything. Yeah. They don't leave like a well meticulously taped suicide note to the back of a dusty old like desktop computer. And at the I think at the very least that is in a oddity or yeah. eccentricity. and. I actually, in my mind, I always try to think what in the mind of someone who is either delusional or not delusional or whatever Mm -hmm. level they're at of like an artist or a screenwriter Mm -hmm. or a creative type. And here's what I imagined. Because I I see a lot of also a lot of people. I mean, for years I've been on the internet and we're all kind of like – and I've worked in analytics of the internet. What makes people – react to certain things Mm -hmm. and what makes people do these things. And I'm not by any means an an expert or I don't have a degree in in anything. But what I've noticed with actors, like, why would this person be doing this? And here's what I came to when it came to his, the note behind the computer, Mm -hmm. somebody in a book or a, uh, a marketing class or some kind of writing class, they said, Make a list of Mm -hmm. all the things you want your finished screenplay to have. Mm -hmm. Put all the ingredients in there. I want you to write it out. Visualizing. Yeah, sure. It's a little bit of a vision board. Jason's pointing at me because I'm very into this shit. Yeah, do it. But they also don't say to tape it in the back. Well, hold on. I I, I, I say maybe they did. 
Here's what I say. Okay, okay. If I was like, how do you how do you think this played out? Mm-hmm. And I say, write all those things down. Put mm-hmm. all everything in there. And I want you to fold it up and tape it to the back of the computer that you're writing your screenplay on. Mm-hmm. And in some way, that information back there, no one can see it. You can't see it, but you know it's back there. It is in some way informing your work in a subconscious way. Okay, but why today? Why did that note get placed there today? Like, I totally yeah, believe yeah. that, and I agree with that. It's just, it's hard for me, and that's kind of my theory with the note, which I can describe mm-hmm. after you're done. Uh, that's really, I mean, also that mm-hmm. it's just somebody where he maybe he thinks that his – for some reason, he needs that to be hidden. Yeah. In a very, I'm sure he could have hid it between like pages of a book no one reads. Yeah. There's got to be some significance to that, or either he saw it somewhere, or he yeah. felt compelled to do it on his own. Yeah. The note is so strange. Um, it's very, and it reminded me of the episode that we did about the the guy in Australia who was found dead with a poem in his pocket. Um, Summerton man. Summerton man. You remember it? I don't remember it. What happened yesterday? What am I? What's my name? Um, yeah. I, I think. And again, I want to uh, reiterate that the Baltimore Police Department's predominant theory is that it was a suicide. And they really, like, hit this home. They kind of hammered it. That happens a lot, I feel like. Yeah, because it's simple. You know, it's simple. They don't have to get anyone. They don't have to do their jobs very well, especially with a case like this, which obviously it's so abstract and hard to come to grips with. And, and it, it, it might be sense. the case. I mean, just to be fair, it, yeah. they might be correct. Yes, I get it. Possibly. So, I know. Like, especially with the whole, it's like, there's so many simpler ways to commit suicide, especially because he was afraid of heights. You too. need to see the episode, what you, you're definitely, well, you're getting a, a you're lot getting from a lot the episode that you're not getting here. Uh, mm-hmm. By the way, we're describing it, but a lot of what you're getting is just seeing where this hole is in comparison yeah. to where this hotel is. Mm-hmm. And that's, that. that's the thing that kind of, it's not like, well, anyone could do that. They had trajectories of people running at different heights and mm-hmm. different. And why did his stuff was his, yeah, you know, the stuff, stuff was in, unscathed and yeah. some of it was, some of it wasn't. It's really crazy. His his injuries were, it, the coroner still said it was, you know, like mysterious circumstances around what created what injury kind of a thing. Um, but I think it has something to do with uh, him. He So he, he was writing this newsletter called The Rebound Report which was subscribers for a thousand dollars a letter, which was a lot of money for, for a, you know, a page report on stock tips. I feel like, is that like inside? Like, Hey, do you want this insider trading? It's like so fucking sketchy, like, but fine. All right. So, so he puts out this thing. He's the writer of this thing. His name is on it. Um, and I think first of the names, like, so it's like him highlighted as the writer of these tips. These tips are bad, by the way. Um, not all of them, but I think a lot of them, which is why they got into a lawsuit. Some of them Stansbury. have to be bad, I yeah, guess. Yeah, well, Stansbury got into a lawsuit because some of them were bad tips. And so that, obviously, if if the price of entry to this is $1,000, there's got to be a lot of money. The stakes have to be very high. Very high, very high. So I think that, um, God, what's his name? Uh, Porter Stansbury, again, fake name, don't believe it, got into some trouble with these fake tips, especially with maybe – the Russian people who were getting the tips from him, which again, this a high Russian population in Baltimore um, from uh, a, a Reddit user said that they, they lived in the Belvedere at the time. Um, I've, yeah, I got that. My friend, I'll get to that too. If yeah. Somebody yeah. Some information. Um, Russians own property in the bottom floor. So they were involved mm-hmm. in the goings on of the Belvedere. Um, but he got involved. He got in too deep. He kind of used Ray as a sacrifice. Perhaps, because we have the note that day and we have the Freemason stuff, maybe um, was uh, Porter Stansbury trying to kind of bait him to be like, oh, maybe we can get into the Freemasons. So you have to come quick. They're doing an initiation, something that he would be very intrigued by, something where it's like write down your, you know, some kind of right of Freemasonry that he could bait them into giving him kind of over to these very angry people who felt slighted that he owed a lot of money to as a sacrifice um, or, you know, as exchange and then getting off scot-free. The Freemasons are very compelling. You know Mm -hmm. what they've brainwashed me to do? What? Take a break. (gasps) Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, Are you well? Are we well? I don't know. With this episode, are are, are we well? But we wanted to check in, say hello. Hello. How are our mayors doing? How are they? Brandon Gaddis. Hi. Hello. He's giving Mm -hmm. me a hardcore band 
tips like oh, he's like damn. bands like it like i was like i haven't heard this band so he's kind of hooking me up with the glasses that. twins glasses twins chris witt chris witt how's it going how's is it like are you sleeping a lot being yeah dad? no yes are you listening to us while you are up at 3 a.m nursing yeah. your infant child uh jeanette link hi jeanette being stylish absolutely in the always. house Ben Forsyth, Hello, what's ben. up? How are Hello, you, welcome. Benjamin? Do you, do you oh, like to call that? I don't, I don't think he probably doesn't like it. I don't yeah, know, but I'm, yeah, I'm gonna try it out. Yeah. And uh, Lauren Pasek, she Pasek. actually asked about uh, the ro- robbery. She's like, "Well, good thing you had insurance." And it's like, mm, "Oh, yeah, I, that did not. That did not. I'm so sorry. That did not work out." But the the patrons oh, uh, have been very helpful. Exactly, and I will tell you all that just today or just yesterday. Um, Although this will be a couple days since this is released, I did get uh, Simply Safe. We we don't work for Simply Safe. No. I know they do a lot of podcast advertising. <laughs> I just got Simply Simply Safe. I'm very happy with it. Um, hopefully, it will protect me from other burglars. Unwanted burglars, not yes. the wanted ones. They're no. welcome in here anytime. But the unwanted ones. So we mm-hmm. want to thank our patrons. We have bonus episodes. We have advance ad free episodes it's patreon.com slash ghost town pod mm-hmm. another way you can help is we have a youtube channel and you're yeah. like how does that help you can subscribe to it it's just ghost town podcast mm-hmm. you'll, you'll know when you see it but if you go on there and check out one of the playlists and click on any of the videos in the playlist and just let it play through with the ads yeah that helps us and it's it's a way that doesn't cost you anything you don't have to watch it, it you heightens can just, your vibrations i it, know that oh you, you'll there's become actually, empath level seven <laughs> there's a lot of um tonal uh work going on under our videos that yeah. um we put them there to subvert wealth your bad energy wealth health exactly you're gonna get, get taller immediately after yeah listening to a video too much even you're gonna be like cuz slow down be, no, i don't need it can't handle all this. yeah so if you just you go to our youtube channel and click on any of the videos or literally any of the videos but if you start one in the playlist it'll play through the whole playlist and all the ads and that'll mm-hmm. help us in the algorithm of youtube people finding our stuff and we have a tiktok which is ghost town pod mm-hmm. and instagram which is ghost town it's pod fun and we wanted to just say thanks to anyone's even listening yes, for supporting you. and all the other patrons that have contributed and helped. We're and- so grateful. Oh, my God. It has been a rough month, and it's only halfway through. So I appreciate that. Yeah. it's And it's- anyone who's left an Apple podcast review, thank you. Mm-hmm. We could always use some more. Rate and review on Apple Podcasts. It is super helpful. And then also let us know while we're here, do you... Do you want us to do more of these episodes yeah, from Unsolved Mysteries? Point. Or do you want something that's not based on what we watched on a television yeah. show? Do you want more or less homework? Do you like yeah. your homework? Yeah. Are you in school at all? Yeah. Where are we? Is this Who your are only are education? Are we homeschooling you? I hope not. <laughs> you should, hopefully you'll be homeschooling us. Or is this us. the hardest and greatest job we've ever had? Yeah. So uh, hard to say. We'd, love to, we'd love to hear some feedback on that. Yeah, that would be really great. And also, you know, if you are digging in, if you have been watching, let us know your theories. Let us know if you agree with us. I've watched all of them. You're still behind. I have one more. So you're probably grab. by the time mm-hmm. anyone gets to you, you'll have watched that yeah. one. I'll be ready to talk. So we're it. ready We're ready to hear from you about this episode or any mm-hmm. episode, and perhaps we can include it in a future one if yeah. you will allow us. Yeah, I think it's very fun. It's very fun to talk this through. And Do you want to go back in? Let's go through that hole. Let's go. Let's go. To seek the truth. Let's go through that hole. So I, I looked through the – and you looked through mm-hmm. the dump that Netflix did on Reddit. Which, which isn't really like that big. Like no. They – I think they have more than that that may – I was a little disappointed because I think some things were really, really important and really cool that they didn't allow. But other things were just kind of rehashy stuff that you already got if you watched the episode. One thing that I, I looked at and I thought mm-hmm. was interesting, I don't know how much it was discussed in the episode, I don't think much, is the helicopter theory. Yes. And what they're saying is could he be a drop from a helicopter? And that seems like it makes a lot of sense. Totally. But still – how do people fall from helicopters and how specific would it have to be? Because I'd imagine there might be some flailing around and yeah. might not leave a, not leave a torso-sized hole mm-hmm. if the body is sideways. I, I yeah. don't know what, or what that is. Or was tied up, fell through, they untied him and they dropped the, the stuff. It could be. Yeah, It, it also, looks like – The helicopter stuff is interesting, but I also don't – agree with it because helicopters are so noisy and part of this whole thing nobody at the belvedere nobody around heard anything and what they were saying is that for a helicopter to truly get close enough Mm -hmm. would be very very difficult scientifically 
for a helicopter to be where it needed to be. And also Mm -hmm. the police chief says if they wanted, uh, not chief, the lead investigator, he says, if you wanted to like get rid of this body, the harbor is nearby. Yeah. You can just drop it right in the harbor. You know what I mean? Like if that's your end goal, why Mm -hmm. dropping it through this hotel is, is making more open doors than closed. So the helicopter theory is mentioned heavily on here. Mm -hmm. Now, no one's seeing them in, in the hotel. Yeah. I, I think back to the podcast serial that kind of really kicked off a lot of this stuff. Oh, yeah. And the idea of going back and truly remembering things. Like if somebody said, hey, I want you to remember something from 20 years ago, yeah. please. How much would you really remember? How accurate would it be? Mm-hmm. And I feel like we could – if if you're not looking for something or someone, yeah. you could technically see an individual – and not register it. Is it possible in this hotel that Ray Rivera was seen, but people just did like, I mean, no, I did not see this person. Yeah. It doesn't mean he wasn't there. I, I, yeah, I think we not t- seen. If someone, in, if, if yeah. the person that did this in the hotel was a big player in the hotel, had a, an apartment, a complex, had a lot of power, they probably went up a freight elevator. They, they used some undetected things to get into this place. He was also on a top ish floor under the roof. So there's so many ways to get through. And I know they talk about you have to go through a lobby or whatever. Do you? I don't know. And yeah. I imagine you don't have to go through. Uh, listen, if I was the owner of the hotel mm-hmm. and I wanted to get in there, I was like, I don't want to go through the lobby. I'm sure they'd be like, well, we can find a way for you to yeah. get in there, sir. So I, I, I'm like sure. Hotel, like, come on. And then, you know, the cameras. Yeah. Cameras are always interesting because it is 2006, mm-hmm. so it's relatively modern. But I feel like, you know, CCTV isn't like mm-hmm. a, you know, when you watch things that are happening in Europe, there's always mm-hmm. CCTV. I mean, it's always, if you watch any crime ish things out of Ireland or the mm-hmm. UK, I mean, CCTV is like all over that. Yeah. And, and people say that sometimes people that worked at hotels, sometimes cameras work 50 50, mm-hmm. tapes are erased. I mean, whether conspicuously or inconspicuously Mm -hmm. erased. And if you don't want to be seen from a camera, there's probably a way for you to do that. Yeah. And like my friend David Prater, just a few hours ago, we didn't, he didn't know that I was doing this episode. And I don't, Mm -hmm. I think I may have mentioned a couple of weeks ago watching this. He Mm -hmm. was like, so the Russians killed Ray Rivera. And I was yeah. like, wait, whoa, how do you know that it was about – it was very strange yeah, because yeah. I was doing like a little extra research on this. Totally. And he was like, so the Russians – because they – like you said, that bottom floor is a restaurant. Yeah. And here's a, a comment that I found on Reddit. Um, uh, someone said, I lived in the Belvedere at the time. There were a very suspicious bunch of Russians who owned property on the bottom floor. Everyone seemed to think they were involved in organized crime. We lived on that side of the building, the side that he died on, but we didn't hear anything. I don't remember anyone else say they heard anything either. If anyone, he had probably, if anyone had, he probably would have been found. It's not, it's not a hotel. It's a residence, right? It's their it's residence. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I guess. Like, I believe, I think it is, res, it, it's the Belvedere Hotel, but I think it's a, a place that has mm, lofts or, or, you know, it's yeah, a, it's a, it's it's a like living a re- place, but, have, like, and it's not, you know, it's not like swanky. It does have a lot of history and it looks pretty cool, but it's not necessarily like some super high end yeah. uh, place. But it, yeah, the, the restaurant and lounge is the Red Square. Mm. So that is an interesting that kind of interesting. And it's interesting and kind of makes it doesn't go too far into conspiracy mm-hmm. like the Freemasons. I mean, yeah. I just think the Freemasons are a great vehicle to bait someone who was kind of a, a, on the simpler side. I, I don't mean to, any disrespect. Susceptible. Well, anyone who thinks that maybe they can be a screenplay writer, you have to have a little bit of naivety. Yeah. Yeah. We kind of all have it, but just like- How to, much? It's, it's a good way to lure someone in. So much so that when I went down the Freemason hole, when I was watching the uh, extra footage, I contacted the Freemasons- and sent them an email because I don't. I still don't even know if women can be in the Freemasons. I don't think so. I don't so. think so. Either. They were all just dudes. Like it was like a page of the members, which again, very secret society. It's on their website. Who's involved? But uh, my grandfather was in the Freemasons, so I was like, I shot them an email. I was like, Hey, uh, my grandfather was in this. I think he was in this chapter, the LA chapter. Do you allow women in? What is the way to become a member here? Well, they're not going to tell you that. Well, I emailed them, though. Yeah. With my email. What'd they say? 
I don't know. They haven't responded well, yet. Well, you, you shouldn't. You, you shouldn't have said your name was Rebecca. I said Rebecca M. Lieb. Um, I still have my National Geographic brain game signature at the bottom. My phone number, my personal phone number. <laughs> oh boy! But you know, in uh, someone said a lot of cops are Freemasons. Mm. They, so you you put Freemasons in, and it's so broad. Yeah. It, it, it conjures up so many things. It's almost a little bit of a possible scapegoat to anything. Mm-hmm. But buying Freemason for dummies can't be. I mean, again, I think that's so telling what kind of person Ray Rivera was, that he bought Freemasons for dummies. And somebody else said that, you know, the idea of Porter saying, hey, listen, the Freemasons said, come on down now and get in. right now, quick. People say that it doesn't work like that. Like, he like, wouldn't show up in- up on f- movies, like, maybe you think that, you know, like, that's Oh, he, thing. you're saying maybe he would have got lured that way, Lured. But, I don't yeah. think it's, no. Oh, okay. I don't think there was any way he was going to be, <laughs> right. like, hazed or, like, in the Freemasons. I think maybe Porter, someone was like, this guy's interested in this. Oh. Tell him to do something weird. The like, Freemason CEO is here. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> tell him to put a weird note somewhere and tell him that at a certain time, we're going to call and he has to be outside in his car, like, at this place. I feel like this sort of person would love that premise and would totally go for it. Also, Porter, it should be noted that when they were looking for Ray initially, he put up $1,000, which seems, some people say, well, that's low enough where it's like not going to be too tempting to find him, Mm -hmm. but it's enough to be like, thanks. But somebody said like, well, it was in the early stages. Just because he's a banker, does that mean he's a mil- – it's not like he's yeah, a – Yeah, I don't know. A $1,000 might be like, I, I well, think that's a good amount. why won't we talk? Like, why, why wasn't he in this document? Like, there's so much stuff where it's like it's been enough time where – Also, and again, these are all alleged. I'm just mm-hmm. – people are saying this. There were two services mm-hmm. or memorials for him. Porter was at neither of them. Damn. His high school friend who he changed his life took his new wife to go work for. That is so – Suspicious. And just to, just for the sake of being on Porter's side for a second, his company is under separate to this SCC scrutiny, which totally. is pretty, you this know, like securities and one some of his fraud. Best friends, if not his best friend. But friends. maybe he's like, listen, my company, I'm so under, I have like a RICO case against me. Being involved in this weird missing dude, again, they're. we're taking their friendship from what we're seeing. There's some people who was like, yeah, I knew the dude from back. A hometown dude. Mm -hmm. Listen, if he's involved in, like, there's a missing thing. I already got my own problems. Yeah. We're assuming that they're, like, we know that their relation, what the relationship is. It is definitely weird, without a doubt. Yeah. Or maybe she, but also maybe his wife, maybe he did send something or something that we just didn't mention. Did she mention that he, you know, flowers or something? I don't know. I just feel like it's very, the fact that he didn't even reach out to her or the family, even just a note Something like and that. And everyone's all lawyered up and gag ordered up. But some people are saying it's because he's just under the microscope yeah, so like much. A gross financial bro. And he might be like, listen, oh God, this is weird. I this dude is so he you know, every newsletter he types up, he's like, Do you think Kubrick would love this? Mm-hmm. Like he, yeah. we don't know the eccentricities or none at all. There's a couple of allegations that Porter and him were lovers. Ooh, love that one. Other allegations that Allison and Porter had a thing. Ooh. Again, that I think it, anything's possible, and people are just connecting, trying to connect dots. Where maybe what would that aren't. mean, though? If they had a thing, so what would that mean for his disappearance? Did you mean like, did he threaten to blow it up? Like what? I, I don't know. I like. I think those are interesting. I'm just not sure how they fit into his. Yeah, life. I don't know what what did Allison have to gain from Ray dying, and I don't really see. I don't see any. Yeah, you know, like I don't what, know. She's going to be together with Porter? No, obviously not. No. You know. Or like, you know, Ray was going to tell out Porter about their mm. relationship. That makes a little bit more sense, but also, I don't know. I mean, most of the affection you see f- from Ray is him and Porter just being yeah. whatever, just saying what I'm... Yeah. I'm I, okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, I feel like most of the pictures of Ray was like his arm around... Somebody here. Did you hear something? Yeah, like, thud. Yeah. That's not a door of yours opening, is it? No. You sure? Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, we just got done talking about Simply Safe. Oh, boy. Sorry, everyone. Yeah. Now, people looking, now, now two people looking in this window as we're doing yeah. this. I don't know what's happening. It was a big, like a thud. Not a crash, yeah. but like a thud. And then I was like, from the house. I, for a second I thought, I was like, what if somebody is here robbing the place and is like, hey. We're just behind this uh, curtain <laughs> yeah. recording. Sorry. We're like sitting ducks back here. <laughs> yeah. 
Jeez, these are all my valuables, though. The I have, and I'm going to list it in the sources, which is essentially the Netflix episode, but mm-hmm. it is from uh, a podcast, I believe. Um, they It's from True Crime and Pyrex. Mm-hmm. There is a pretty thorough document in here. It's got Ray's autopsy report. Mm. The note with there's a lot of references on here. The breakdown, a lot of what is on the note and type it out. It's, mm-hmm. it's very thorough. I'm going I you know, it's I found it because it was given for people to use and perhaps add to but you have to contact True Crime and Pyrex, the some discrepancies, a lot of names, some of the things are blacked out or redacted, a lot of celebrity types people that Ray knew and like, mm-hmm. but he talks about them as being five years younger or five years older. It's all very strange. Wow. And to get into all of this would be a, a very, uh, a, a, there's just a lot to digest and a lot to kind of spit back out. But there, it's pretty interesting and compelling when it's all laid out on this in a way where you can stop and look at it as compared to watching it on Netflix where you're like, yeah. let me just stop and fast forward. So uh, we will we will list this so you can look at it for yourself. But it does make things – it really adds to the strangeness of the Ray Rivera note. Ooh. So that might be something for people to – so we don't know. We don't know. We, we don't know. Likely we, we will never know unless someone from – the place that he works, Stansbury Financial. It just needs to be somebody I who think, knows somebody. Yeah, That's all it has I to just, be. It's got to be with them. Like, I think someone who worked there And has imagine to being, um, um, pretend you used to work there mm-hmm. and you have nothing to do with the place. Your gag order is done. Your, your Netflix is very popular. Mm-hmm. Like I said, people are, are, are probably just looking for something new to watch. Mm-hmm. And we're some of those people just happens to fall in our wheelhouse of what we're interested in. Yeah. And a lot of other people, but imagine, imagine an episode comes up and it's somebody that you're like, Oh no, they're talking about this case. Or, or you're like, I wasn't where this case. I worked at Porter Stansbury that time. Yeah. You're like, huh? And, and you you're, you're, and you're somebody who's like, listen, even anonymously is like, I'll give you some details. Yeah. And that ha- this has to be literally the best possible thing for these unsolved cases yeah. to bring it the national attention. You wouldn't get it if it was just even the biggest true crime podcast. I mean, no, maybe it would. I don't know. But this has got to cross people that aren't even in this world to be like, wait, don't you know somebody who knows something? And that's all that it takes to, like I said, maybe bring a tiny bit more clarity yeah. to something that needs more clarity and maybe a, a little bit of peace to the people that are looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> 